All right, well, maybe this could be the player that brings some momentum back into Miami's recruiting. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, a contributor on allhurricanes.com, and co-host of the Miami Hurricanes post-game show on the radio network. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So we're going to talk some recruiting because there is some more smoke out there on one of the top defensive linemen in the country. So we bring in our pal John Garcia Jr., covers recruiting and does it at a very high level for Sports Illustrated and SI.com. Of course, he's the director of football recruiting for SI. John, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well, my friend. Good to be back on with you. It's great to have you. And remember, every time John joins us, he is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. So there is a, a new prediction for Ruben Bain to commit to the university of Miami. We've been tracking this one for a long time and you know, he's nicknamed the hurricane. So we've been tracking hurricane Bain. And so this latest prediction comes from Andrew Nemec, who is the director of recruiting for SB live. He wrote a nice piece about it. Uh, for that publication today about how he believes Reuben Bain, who's fresh off a visit to Auburn, is going to end up committing to the University of Miami. What's the latest on that process? And do you think we can maybe finally start to uh, expect something from Bain soon? Yeah, I don't know about the timeline part. It, that is the one thing that he's really been consistent with. And if you talk to Bain or even those around him, he's kind of, you know, an introvert. He's very much to himself. Uh, so I, I really you know, don't envision a guy like that who's very much team first, very much focused on the central rockets. Uh, I don't expect a guy like that to all of a sudden come out and make a verbal commitment. Uh, and then also to that front, he keeps taking visits, right? I mean, this, this thing has been far from a Miami lock or home run type situation. Look, Miami's the favorite. He's got the family ties. He's been there the most, all of those things. But it's not a runaway selection at this point. And he continues to take visits elsewhere, including to programs where he previously took official visits to, right? So he took an official to Auburn in the summer, and he was back at Auburn last weekend for an unofficial, which he said was just unbelievable. Uh, although, again, there's a lot of smoke around that coaching staff, maybe yeah. not staying put. So we'll see what happens after Georgia probably blows them out uh, here in the next few days. Notwithstanding, Louisville, another program in the same or similar type boat, is still very high on his list. Of course, there's Alabama and Nick Saban uh, also in that conversation, among a, a few others. So he continues to take visits to both Miami and other programs, and he still has a couple officials he could potentially take later in the process. So that is where I'm looking to see if, if the timeline starts to change and some visits get canceled or he stops taking visits, then I will assume something's going to happen relatively soon. But on the prediction front, I think it's good news for Miami, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that is expected locally. You know, I'm in South Florida, you're in South Florida. We hear most of that buzz locally first. So there's a natural orange and green tint to it. When it comes from someone based in Oregon, I think that's good news for the Hurricanes because now that news is traveling and that expectation is growing from a national standpoint. So I think in that regard, uh, this is really good news for Miami. But it's it's still going to be a true battle here in the end, although, again, uh, all the ties, all the, the leanings toward Miami are absolutely true in Ruben Bain's case. And I think if you laid out every single prospect that's uncommitted that Miami wants, he would be the biggest must get guy. I think he's the most important recruit remaining for the U, both from a positional standpoint, because you always need edge rushers, but also yeah. from a perceptional standpoint. You need to keep the best talent home. And this is a long standing, you know, battle with big time programs uh, for a kid you should contend for uh, all the way through. So winning that type of battle, I think, would be good. Uh, helps with culture, helps with uh, finalizing the class. It would help with momentum just about in every way, shape or form. He's probably the most famous recruit still on the board uh, within in-state recruits, I should say. 
And he's the real deal, right? I mean, 29 sacks last season as a junior with Miami Central. And, you know, a lot of us watched him uh, going up against IMG Academy. He had a three sack performance in that game. Like there, there's no doubt about this guy being a good future player, right? A hundred percent. SI 99 recruit, uh, a guy who I think he's only played three games this year and he's at eight and a half sacks. Whoa. So about three sacks a game is something any defensive coordinator at any level will, will gladly take from a pass rusher. Uh, and again, you know, he's got some versatility to his game too, right? He's not the biggest, longest prospect, which probably holds him back from other folks and how they rank and rate players. Um, but, you know, he could probably drop off and, and cover some tight ends, play in space a little bit more as well. But really, uh, obviously, his his calling card is certainly getting after the passer where he was as productive as any recruit or any football player in America last year. So something that has been just shocking people on Kane's Twitter for, I don't know, the last 12, 24 hours. I think I saw this about 12 hours ago. You know, the last time you were on with me, we spoke about the need at wide receiver. And we talked about Malachi Coleman, four star out of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, who had been a very strong Nebraska lean. But then with Frost being fired, it seems like his recruitment is kind of back open again. And then, you know, we see on social media schools are canceling or rescheduling visits with him Ole Miss canceled an official visit of his and apparently Miami just canceled on him as well uh you know apparently Miami wants to reschedule to a later date but they canceled the visit he was supposed to have this weekend so what's going on there John because Miami needs receivers why are they canceling on people yeah, that, that one was surprising, I think, on, on a lot of fronts. It, it appeared as Malachi was somewhat surprised as well, uh, which which pushed him towards going public with something that's not always easy to go public with, right? When, when the school makes the move as opposed to the kid making the move. Uh, so that's something notable. Um, there's always more to the story than we realize. So I think yeah. that's important to note uh, in this regard. But we actually spoke to Malachi a little bit earlier today, and he said, look, Everyone thinks I'm staying home. Everyone thinks I'm going to end up at Nebraska anyway, even following all the craziness uh, in the coaching carousel. So he felt like that stunted not only his recruitment, but his ability to build relationships with some of the newer programs on the list, like a Miami, like an Ole Miss. So according to him, you know, he says he really just isn't as far along as he'd like to be with some of these relationships. However, he also confirmed he's still moving forward with plans to make a commitment this month. October 22nd is the date uh, he came out with a few weeks ago. Miami was in that top group. Ole Miss was in that top group. Of course, Nebraska and a host of others. So it looks like he'll stay on track with that verbal commitment date. It just most likely won't be Miami or Ole Miss. So if that visit does get rescheduled, it will become a flip attempt for the Miami Hurricanes as opposed to a straight up uh, you know, verbal commitment uh goal or win uh, on the recruiting trail so interesting changes there with malachi coleman and yeah with, with the need at the receiver position especially with that bigger longer wide receiver body type very interesting and surprising frankly to see that that change of events but uh could be something for miami fans to keep an eye on later in the game after he makes that verbal commitment assuming it wasn't uh to miami Got a lot more to talk about here with John Garcia, Jr., Director of Football Recruiting for Sports Illustrated. Want to talk about another wide receiver with John that uh, Miami may be setting their sights on, even though he is verbally committing elsewhere. Uh, and one of the top corners in the country who's in the backyard is uh, is going to be announcing in November. So we'll see if Miami could still be on the top of his list. But guys, we have to talk about Simply Safe. The numbers do not lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. And guys, here's why I love it the technology is incredible. You control your system from your phone. With their app, uh, you watch the crystal clear HD live stream of your security cameras. It's kind of addicting for me in a weird way. It's like I'm watching TV uh, with a wide variety of high tech sensors as well. With 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents will call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders with an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com. Save 20%. On your Simply Safe security system, 
when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free, there's no safe like Simply Safe. And guys, we are also brought to you by Built Bar. All oh, the puffs are fantastic. Guys, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys if you haven't tried the Built Puffs. There's a new flavor, and it's my favorite delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to my new favorite and yours, cookie dough chunk puffs. Yes, they have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. It's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of actually making it, plus... Yeah, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories with a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is covered in real chocolate, so they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. They are so good. What's great about Built Bars is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Go to built.com, use our promo code locked on 15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code locked on 15. Alex Dono here with John Garcia, Jr., director of football recruiting for Sports Illustrated. Damari Brown, cornerback from American Heritage. Uh, Miami can definitely use corners, right? I mean, we talk about receivers a lot, but Robert Stafford is the only corner currently locked into the class of 2023. Damari Brown has dropped an announcement date of November 5th. And I, I don't know, how, how much noise has there been, John? Because within the last couple of months, it sounds like Miami's the front runner. Is that the case? I still think it's the case, 100%. Uh, it, it's not as easy, maybe, as it seemed uh, from the off season, uh, I think Alabama, Clemson, Florida State, heck, have have made charges in their own right, um, and I know Florida State's expecting him on campus at some point as well. Uh, but Miami's already hosted him a couple of times. He's a legacy, local, all of those things that that make sense for Ruben Bain kind of carry over for Damari Brown, and he's also kind of upped his stock. I mean, I think he's had as good as a season thus far as any DB in the state of Florida. And that that's obviously saying a lot with the type of talent that comes through this state, including the number one corner in the country, Cormani McLean. And look, against those Chaminade superstar receivers that, that no one's been able to slow down, he made the most plays that we've seen, you know, this season against those guys. So he's absolutely still, you know, putting his money where his mouth is. And I think uh, reemphasizing why he's such a big priority for Miami and a bunch of other schools. But yeah, I think the sooner he commits, the better. So now we're about a month away from that decision, I think barring some really big changes to you know his own goals or maybe how much other schools are prioritizing him um, or maybe a change of visit plans, I really don't think this is going to be a, an out-of-state battle. I think Miami's the favorite. Florida State probably the biggest threat, and their you know their start to the season I think has a lot to do with that as well. That that program has seemingly stabilized under Mike Norvell, which we hadn't talked about in, with that program for I don't know five years before that point. So I think that's a big deal for FSU, and it will create a little bit more head to head battles with the Knowles and the Canes, much like we saw this offseason between Miami and the University of Florida. So uh, the big three battles will start to ramp up a little bit as FSU continues to, I guess, punch above its weight class, for lack yeah. of a better phrase. I just hope they keep losing. Uh, that's that's my my views do not necessarily reflect those of John Garcia Jr., but you know, it's nice to see. And, and Florida State's having a better year than Miami, that's for sure. So I'm not talking cr trash. I just hope that they lose more games. <laughs> Thank you, Wake Forest. <laughs> Thank you, Sam Hartman. Uh, but, you know, elsewhere, well, let's go back to wide receiver. Um, you know, I had a, a conversation on the show within the last couple of days with uh, with Larry Bluestein, and, like, he, he emphasized, like, Miami should keep making – Brandon Ennis a priority even though he is verbally committed to Ohio State it sounds like this is one Miami has not given up on uh should they give up John how how solid do you think he is with Ohio State could Miami have a chance for a late flip you got to keep chipping away uh and, and this is one of those where you do so by by any way shape or form and I think the fact that you know the guy we just talked about Damari Brown if he is likely to become a cane, that that's Brandon's teammate. That's the yeah. guy who covers him every single day at American Heritage. And Miami's also in on Mark Fletcher, the running back from Heritage, uh, that's committed to Ohio State as well. They're trying to flip him 
to a certain degree. And obviously a lot of these South Florida recruits talk to one another. So when you talk about best on best, Miami is going to be involved uh, through back channels, through front facing channels, and just about every way in between. And, and look, Ennis is still, at least for us, he's the class uh, at that position. So we talked about how big of a need there is when you've got the nation's number one wide receiver in your backyard, I mean, my gosh, that's something you have to continue to press forward with. You know, he's become familiar. Uh, he very much prefers this coaching staff to the previous. There was little to no mention of Miami before this coaching staff took over. It was all about USC, Oklahoma, Alabama, et cetera, Ohio State, obviously. So I do think Miami has made up some ground. And I know in the offseason, there was some talk of, of him and Carnell Tate two friends and South Florida Express teammates, as well as Ohio State commitments, kind of visiting Miami together. And, and that's where that news broke. We were talking to Carnell, and he was like, yeah, Brandon keeps telling me that Miami's just not going to stop for him or me, so we might go visit together. So Brandon is kind of playing messenger to a degree between Miami and Carnell Tate, at least at that point. So clearly there is consistent communication. You expect Miami to keep chipping away, but – it's a beast. It's an uphill climb, right? I mean, when it comes to receiver and what Ohio State has done, it's it's about as as a plus a pairing as, as we've seen at any position at any school over the last five, 10 years. So it's it's going to be an uphill battle. But again, those are the ones you, you got to contend for and compete with uh, to win at the highest level. And, and those are the type of recruits that you're, you're going to have to win out for if you're going to get over this hump and not lose to the MTSUs of the world. Yeah, you said it. The wound is still fresh, John. We don't we don't bring up MTSU anymore. That was so last week. Um, so Miami, of course, class of 2023. They've got two quarterbacks committed. And, you know, the crown jewel of that duo is Jaden Rashada, four star out of Pittsburgh, California. Um, he was at Ole Miss this past weekend. There is a family connection. That's where his brother plays. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Anytime you see one of your commits on another campus, you, you get a little concerned. Uh, is there anything going on there? Yeah, I'm sure the the Jaden Rashada wearing all Ole Miss gear was circulating. That picture was circulating through some group chats over the weekend. You know, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, it's it's worth noting as as we are. But I wouldn't read too much beyond that. Like you said, uh, his brother uh, is is on that uh, Ole Miss roster. Uh, and look, it was a big game, right? It was probably yeah. you know one of the best games of the weekend. And and you know two highly thought of undefeated SEC teams going at it with Kentucky uh, up at uh, up at Ole Miss. So um, he got to see a good game, and obviously got to see his brother rocking you know red, white, and blue for the first time. So I do think it's most mostly about that. Um, th there was no um, talk of him staying around. Around or, or anything that Ole Miss is initiating. And, and I think maybe the best part of it from the Miami perspective in terms of what's tangible is that Ole Miss's verbal commitment at quarterback, Marcel Reed, was actually in Oxford that weekend as well. There were not many pictures with Marcel and Jaden in there. So it appears as if Jaden didn't take a, a full recruit level participation uh, for an unofficial game day visit. So it does appear like it's a little bit more of a family deal, but of course Ole Miss was in it, right? I think that's, that's yeah. worth bringing up as well. Ole Miss before it became kind of a Florida Miami battle that went back and forth. I think Ole Miss uh, was, was one of the programs that felt really good about winning the Jaden Rashada recruitment. So interesting, but I don't think it's too noteworthy, at least from what we can gather at this point. Um, how big a part of recruiting is momentum, John? Because it felt like in June and July, Miami had a lot of it. And, you know, we were just talking about Reuben Bain. And again, he, he may still take his time to make a decision. But if Miami can get something like that, if they can get another big time verbal commit, can that start another avalanche? Absolutely. You know, th these kids talk. I know we talked about it with Ennis and Carnell Tate and stuff. These kids talk all the time. They they, they compare notes. They're, you know, share, sharing videos on how they did on Friday night. Um, they're checking, hey, where are you going this weekend? I was thinking of going to, you know, the Ole Miss Kentucky game. You know, that stuff circulates between uh, these elite recruits. So, yeah, if, if kids start to move up their dates and they pop a little more for, for the green and orange, I do think that could spur some momentum for Miami, um, independent of what's going on on the field. I think that's always something to note because we assume that all of that stuff matters so much in recruiting when in reality it, it kind of doesn't unless it's a really, really bad or striking scenario. So for a first-year program that's trying to establish under Mario Cristobal, 
the on-field results aren't going to be a one-to-one ratio with how high a recruiting class can officially be ranked. Uh, so I think Miami's still going to bring in plenty of blue chip recruits, top targets, all that stuff is, is still very much in front of them. And yeah, once one pops, uh, this drought will be over and it could become a, another little string of momentum. I love it. Make sure you guys follow John's work. He's at John Garcia underscore junior on Twitter and check him out on Sports Illustrated, uh, the director of football recruiting for SI. John, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Likewise, my friend. Thanks for having me. Guys, make sure you make Locked on ACC your second listen. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts. Uh, I join her every Thursday to talk Miami and talk about the rest of the conference. So make Locked on ACC your second listen. Thank you for making us your first. We will talk to you again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.